All-Star game last night. Ah. <sighs> I've been promoting baseball. I've been embracing baseball, except for let's start, you know, the 10th inning with the runner at second base. That's the only problem I've had and all the strikeouts. But I'm watching the All-Star game, and I was bored. Bored with the uniforms. I was just like, okay. You know, home run derby was interesting, but All-Star game, not exciting. And uh, the National League won. Who knew that yeah, the National League hadn't yeah, won in a decade? An eclipse. Nobody the National did. League did, I tell yeah. you that much. Yeah, okay. It's just not special. There's certain things that it's like you're trying to put earrings on a pig or lipstick on a pig, and you go, okay, hey, all right. And you're like, no, no. The All-Star game lost its luster a long, long a time ago. A lot of grumbles ago. coming from this room I over know. your take right well, there, your uh, lipstick. Uh, I'm just telling you how it used to be. When, when when you got to see the American League play the National League and they hadn't seen each other, now you have interleague play. Interleague play, while I like it, I don't love it when it comes to these kind of moments, a World Series or an All-Star game, I know that the stakes are higher in a World Series, but you liked it when that guy hadn't faced that guy. Or maybe there was a little animosity there. Or maybe there was pride, the National League versus the American League. Do I think these guys in the National League the last decade have gone home and cried? You know, sat on the porch with their dog and had a beer and just say, oh, I'm a loser. We can't beat the American League. Well, it used to be you really cared, but it doesn't anymore. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter, it Tom. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> it just doesn't matter if we win or we lose. So I'm watching, and I go, okay, yeah, it's a Tuesday night in July. There's not much else on. Yeah, let me flip around. Nope, there's not much on. All right, I'll watch. And then I'm just like, okay. I actually was watching the uh, PGA Tour, Live Tour, Senate hearings. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> Dude, I, you going C-SPAN on us? I, I, Holy I, smokes. I, you, you wanted excitement. My guy. I wanted excitement. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's how bored I was. Uh, point of order. Yeah. And nothing is worse than a politician who gets up there and doesn't know what he's talking about. Now, I don't know how often this happens, probably a lot more than we realize. But when it comes to the sports world, when there's sports issues, remember when you had, you know, uh, Rafael Palmero and Conseco and McGuire and they had politicians up there. They didn't know how to pronounce Rafael Palmero's name. Mr. Paul Mary. Mr. Paul Mary. Shouldn't you have somebody you hire just as an advisor, <laughs> a consultant, that when you're going to get in front of the cameras and get in front of the American public, that you know what you're talking just about? Just a little index card with the phonetics in front of you. Yes. Something. So when you're talking about FIFA and you say FIFA <laughs> a couple of times, that's when I go, oh, my God. See, I took that as a shout-out to the show and oh, Soccer Breakdown. Okay. That he was actually just throwing in, Dick was throwing in a <laughs> sneaky little shout-out. Yes, Senator Blumenthal from Connecticut. He's a local, and uh, I've met him. He's a very nice man, but I would have said to him, let's make sure if we're going to talk about the severity of this and the Saudis, we're going to talk about China. Era, we must stop FIFA <laughs> and live golf from taking over the PIGA. <laughs> That's not it at all. Yeah. You got all three wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's not PIGA, it's PGA. <laughs> PIGA <laughs> and live <laughs> shall never merge henceforth. Who was the uh, Boston mayor? That, Menino? Uh, Menino. Oh, my God. Baby. What did he say? Uh, it's uh, Mike McGuire and yeah. uh, Sammy Suser. Sammy Suser. Mike McGuire and Sammy Suser. <laughs> oh, no, no. D that Didn't he do uh, Havlicek? And yeah. he Remember when Havlicek stole the ball <laughs> and Veritek split the uprights? <laughs> we got gonk. We got gonk here. How about gonk? Here, here's, here's Mike McGuire and Sammy Suser. It is a special pleasure for me to introduce are two home run kings for working families in America, Mike McGuire and Sammy <laughs> Suser of the White House. So that's Ted Kennedy, isn't yeah, it? How could that ever happen? How does that happen? And he does it in such a prideful way. Our home run champions here for 
Saving the kids or whatever it is. Mike <laughs> McGuire. <laughs> yeah. Mike McGuire and Sammy Sousa of the White House. Yeah. Yes. What? <laughs> I thought he was going to say of the White Sox. Yeah. You know? uh, Mike McGuire, Sammy Sousa of the White Sox. Welcome to the White House. So I'm watching that last night, and nothing makes me madder than watching these politicians get up there, and they might mean well, but did you do your homework? Did somebody tell you? You can lose credibility in, in a second. When, when somebody goes, oh, uh, how do you pronounce this? Uh, it's FIFA. FIFA. Okay, FIFA. All right, let me write that down phonetically. And then all of a sudden you get in front of the cameras and you're saying, you know, uh, something to do with uh, FIFA. And I went, oh, no, 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 no. Maybe slipped up one time. And then doubled down and came back with a FIFA again. I go, No! You want me to take these hearings seriously? That's not the way to do it. FIFA, governing Barty. Just hire somebody. Hire Howie Schwab, the most knowledgeable sports guy I've ever been around. Howie, hope you're feeling better. Heard from him yesterday. Maybe you could help out these uh, senators, congressmen. Yes. Because we're trusting these idiots to know what they're talking about and to be aware of things. If they're going over like a financial crisis and they're like, Myra Lyons (laughs) shall be shut down. Dude, it's Merrill Lynch. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, Paul. And we do it on our show. Sometimes we we dive into like government topics or uh, topics that are nothing to do with sports. We try to find out how the pronunciation goes, like different places and different towns. We do our best to take a peek and try to find out. We make a lot of mistakes. Did you just mispronounce pronounce, pronunciation? pronunciation. <laughs> Did I say? I mean, Did we I can say find pronounce? out the pronunciation. You said pronunciation. Right? Pronunciation? <laughs> That's good. I wish I was on purpose. Golly, that would be great. Yeah. We that, take uh, the that time, was on purpose. We take the time to learn out about pronunciation. I mean, at least we take to do that. <laughs> That's great. Hey, look, we're told to stay in our lanes all the time. And and you know what? The audience is right some of the time. But uh, just watching last night, I blame this on the All-Star game. I do. I blame it on the All-Star game. There, there were a couple of moments, and then you had a home run by a first-time All-Star. You had a little bit of the ninth. Here's what happens sometimes. We look at the ninth inning, and we go, man, that was, ex- that was an exciting All-Star game. No, it wasn't. Ninth inning might have been. And Julio Rodriguez could have, you know, local boy makes good. There it is in Seattle. And you would have thought, okay. You know, when Fritzy goes, you know what was exciting last night? I go, what? He goes, watching the Fox guys eat uh, popcorn and cotton candy. Yeah, that was, that was, to me, that was pretty exciting. I wonder what the big (laughs) poppy's eating in the fourth (laughs) inning. What am I going to watch? The sack fly that made it 2 1 American League in the fifth or whatever it was? That didn't do anything for me. If they were chugging beers, I would have been interested with that. And I like how Poppy sat between A-Rod and Jeter because Jeter probably said, look, dude, you (laughs) you got to separate me and A-Rod, okay? Yes, Paul. Don't you think that the All-Star game for adults is kind of like going to a parade? Remember when you were a kid, you went to parade with your family. It's the biggest deal in the whole town, and everything seemed big and grand, Mm -hmm. and it seemed awesome, and they're throwing candy, and it was a big deal. When I take my kids to the parade, they, they go crazy. When I go to a parade, let's say I go to, I'm like, all right, I've seen that float before. I've seen this float before. This is nice. This is nice family fun, but it's not for me. It's for the kids. It's for the younger okay, generation. Okay, when did baseball leave us? Us? Yeah. Okay, I look at baseball fans, I would say over 40 or 30 or 40 years old, two ways. There's hardcore or there's casual. Casual, you check on your team. You check on the standings. You know the stars. You watch some baseball games on national TV. You check out Otani. You check out Bryce Harper. And then there's dudes like some of the dudes in back here and some dudes that I know who watch 162 of their team. You're a Cubs, Mets, Reds fan. Like Kirk Herbstreit the other day did his post. He doesn't know what to do when the Reds are off, like at night or in the afternoon, because he watches all 162. Mm. So there's either the casual fan or the 162 fan. And that's that's okay. a line of demarcation. But but no sport has an older demo than baseball does. Yeah. That that's what they've been trying to change. They've been trying to get younger. That's why they're trying to speed up the game. Everything is meant to cater to a younger audience here. But are they forgetting about the older audience here? You know, the the all-star uniforms, bland, boring. The National League, I mean, it looked like they were being punished by wearing those. They were wearing jogging pants. Yes, it didn't look good at all. And and I, I get the, you know, the innovations here and things they want. I get all of that. I'm, and I'm excited for the game. I want more people to appreciate the game. 
but it feels like they're trying too hard to be too young, too hip. Yes, Mark. And maybe it's me. You guys can maybe uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't baseball, doesn't baseball seem like it's the sport where it's passed down from generation to generation? Where like your dad takes you to the ballpark yeah. or yeah. teaches you how to you know play catch more so than any other sport. It was hey get your glove and we're gonna go to a game. We're gonna go watch BP. I mean we don't do that in other sports. You get your glove, you're going to a game. But I, look, the game is still great. There's great players. I'm not knocking any of that. I just you know. They're speeding up a game. And then you, the players are complaining they don't want a pitch clock in postseason. I'm like, no, no, no. Those are the rules. You, you don't have regular season rules, and then all of a sudden you have postseason rules. This is, this is part of it. This is part of the game now. Get rid of the runner at second base, and I'll be fine with all of this stuff. Yes, Paul. Yeah, MLBPA wants the pitch clock changed, the timing rule changed for the postseason, maybe looser, just a touch looser like if there has to be a mound meeting or a guy's going through the signs and needs a break because they don't want a guy called out in the ninth inning of a playoff game for the clock. Well, then be aware of the clock. I, I, I bet Manfred loosens the reins because he won't catch much heat for loosening the reins for the playoff games. They're not going to do it. They're Let's not. Let's add a fourth strike while they're at it. Yeah, they're not. 